with this. You gotta see this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember syrup sandwiches and crime allowances. But this a nigga with some counterfeits. But now I'm counting this. Parmesan with my accountant lives. In fact, I'm down in this. You say with my boo babe takes the. If you guys didn't like last week's video, you're not gonna like this one, so you might as well stop now. I said lower expectations. I gotta leave it about 10 minutes, and this video might be about that long. Now I'm gonna do some jump cuts too, I think. I'm totally winging it. So, um, like I said, don't expect a whole lot. If you're looking for special effects or some cool shit, that should not happen. So one thing I totally forgot to bring up last week. League Pick'em. This is the first time everybody in the league did League Pick'em. Okay? So we had all 12 people make picks. They were terrible. I only think two people went above 500. But this is awesome. We actually have everyone playing. I would like to say last year's champ, Dustin Moan, after two weeks, 4-8. and eight. Let me just say, yours, yours truly right here. Five and one, five and three. I believe if Stud also had a winning record, Stud and I are the only ones with a winning record in general. So, I'm just saying, I'm doing pretty good at this picking shit. So, it's likely that whatever I pick on this video is probably going to be the outcome. Okay? So, I know you guys love to uh, roast me on this. So, I did my power rankings, and I want to just, you know, Kind of a recap of where I left off on that. Where was I right and where was I wrong? Let me just start out by giving Sam some props here. Takes took some big risks. Some of them seem to play out. Look, he's the highest. He's the second highest scorer, and he's sitting there two and zero. So there's somewhere I was wrong. I had Zuck also as the number one uh, power ranking. However, he is still sitting there two and zero, having only scored 130 points. So there is some room for improvement. Some guys haven't played out exactly as I thought they would. Um, however, those are a couple things I just thought I would bring up. And uh, let's get to the transactions of the week. So we had one trade that took place between Sandusky Daycare and the Tarzana Nomads. And a second to happen, I had everyone blowing up my phone. Bruce, Bruce, tell me, give me your take on the trade. Give me a hot take. And I go, guys, just wait for Salo, okay, on Thursday. I'll give you a hot take. Now you guys might want to close your ear, close your eyes and plug up your ears. I'm about to spit fire on my take. Let me just say this. I think Andy Dalton's going to have a big week and he got dropped. All right. When Andy Dalton goes and plays new, new opponents, he generally uh, has a very solid game. I actually think he's going to end up having a, um, a good matchup here against the Packers. That are going to be playing catch up the whole week. Um, but he got dropped, so no one's going to play him this week. I don't know why you, anyone would, since he's had such an awful two-game stretch. Look, Michael Thomas, I don't think he's the first-round slash early second-round pick that he was drafted to be. We've seen Brandon Coleman play a whole lot better. We've seen uh, Ted Ginn. We got, uh, actually, um, Kobe Fleener. We've seen Kobe Fleener actually be somewhat productive. So I think Sam banking on getting... Um, Michael Thomas here, what's going to happen is I'm not so sure it's going to play out because I don't think Michael Thomas is actually going to be as effective as everybody was hoping to. So yes, even though um, we're seeing a lot of Michael Thomas uh, reactions from people to the trade, I don't think it was it worked that it was so bad. Um, I do think Sam got a slight advantage here, but um, as long as Randall Cobb stays healthy and plays as well as he has the first two weeks, I don't think it'll end up being so bad. Well, I'm looking at the list. You got uh, Dante Foreman, I could tell already that Kyle was going to pick him. Jason Wynn, that's definitely a stud move. Um, I don't really see anyone of note here. Richard Higgins seemed to be a, a popular ad. Nobody, no receiver on Cleveland's going to do anything. Um, certainly no one's going to be starting him this week. So I don't think there's really a whole lot to add for transactions this week. Let's get on to the matchups. Let's just see, because I don't want to drag this whole thing out. I got to get going already. First matchup, I got myself, Weiner Diner 49 versus the Bruisers. We got Derek's team. Normally, I like my team. I've been saying that for a couple weeks, but I just got done saying Adol's going to have a big game. That's going to be a result of AJ Green. He's got Julio Jones paired up with Matt Ryan. That matchup scares me. Normally, I like to see, I don't like to play volume running backs, but in this case, with these receivers, you ever have 
a feeling where you think these guys are going to not play well versus or have a big game. I have a pretty good feeling here that Julio Jones and A.J. Green are both going to have very strong games. I think it's going to cancel out his very weak running backs here. Um, you know, I hate to pick against me every single week, but this is this is a matchup where I'm looking at him just like, ah, I don't feel too great about this one. Unfortunately, I'm going to end up going with Derek here over myself in the first matchup of the week. Second matchup here, I got Scott's team. I don't really want to say his name. I think his name is dumb. And I got Pembroke here, the Hillbilly Boners. Let me just say this. Um, Pembroke, Pembroke's team between Jordan Howard, you know, being hurt, really not producing that well. Tariq Cohen's getting a lot more looks than we all thought. Jimmy Graham, that Seahawks offense is looking like shit. I mean, on, and on the flip side with Scott, he's got um, Kareem Hunt, Carlos Hyde, both playing way above their draft position. I don't think this is going to be a close matchup here. I think Pembroke's uh, team is really struggling in a going forward uh, based on what I see that he's got here. I like Jordy Nelson, Michael Crabtree, but I don't think that's that's still going to outdo a, a, um Carlos Hyde and Kareem Hunt are going to be doing this week. So I'm going to go with Scott in this matchup here. Third matchup, Sandusky Daycare, Sam, Tarzana Nomads, Alex. It's not typical that you see a trade take place between two teams that are playing each other this week, but we saw what happened. Alex seemed comfortable with it. I never doubt Sam's moves based on what's happened so far this year. Um... Look, Sam's got a lot of running backs. He's got Tyreek Hill at receiver. I don't know. I, I Michael, Th or, yes, Michael Thomas, I'm not too high on. Guess what? It's still more than really what Alex has. He's starting Rashard Higgins, who a Cleveland receiver um, outside of Terrell Pryor of last year. I can't even think of another one up until Gordon. Now, outside of Le'Veon Bell, there's really not a whole lot to look at. I think Matt Stafford does fine. Um... But look, I think this game is going to be all Sam in the end. I think Le'Veon Bell hits the trading block on week three. Look, I told you Kevin was last week was going to win. He's playing Nick this week. He didn't even have Odell Beckham. Um, listen, I like Kevin here again. Um, LaShawn McCoy got stuffed once people find out he's the only weapon that they have in Buffalo, especially playing Denver this week. I think he's going to get absolutely shut down. He's got Chris Thompson, his second running back, who's nothing better than a flex typically. I'm still not big on Jameis Winston, and even so, he's playing Minnesota, another tough defense. Brandon Cooks going against Houston Texans defense. None of these matchups. Patrick Peterson is going to be covering Des Bryant all week. I mean, I don't really like anything here other than for maybe Nick, he's got Travis Kelsey and Demarius Thomas. Even then, he's playing Buffalo, not a bad defense. I I don't like any of Nick's matchups. Um, not necessarily Kevin's doing anything right or wrong here. I just think it's Nick's on a tough week this week, and I think Kevin's going to run away with this easy. No problem. Let's go, Kev. Going to be quiet, a quiet 2-1 and one after the end of this week. So we got here. Going to make you moan. And Kyle's team, which is blocked by a pop-up ad. So I got it. Booger Sugar, yes. Yes, one of Kyle's favorite activities. Not true. Okay. So Moan made this difficult, as always, where he has all his guys on his bench, so I've got to decipher who he's going to play. Um, I guess he's very superstitious. I don't think it's working since uh, Moan ended up not getting revenge on Sam last week. Now Sam, Moan is sitting there at 1-1, one and, one, and Kyle's 0-2. I think this is definitely a must-win in both owners' eyes because I know Kyle's definitely not. No one wants to start 0-3, and Moan definitely thinks that he should have squeezed out that win last week, catching Sam on a weak week. Oh, I got to get going. I'm way behind doing all these jump cuts. They take up a lot of time. So we got we got Kyle and Moan here. Um, again, Moan doesn't really play anyone, but let me just look at Kyle's team on its own. Doug Baldwin hasn't really done anything, I don't believe, this year. For the Seahawks, their offense has been totally stunted. Trevor Simeon, he's, he's surprisingly been very good this year, but I don't know against Buffalo how that game's going to go. At Buffalo, everyone that has played this year has like not scored any points. But I think for, in general, that's true for the NFL. So I'll give him a pass on that because I don't know how he's going to do. Maybe he's going to play well over there. I know Buffalo has no offense. He might get the ball a lot and have a lot of possessions to work with. Zach Ertz has been very good uh, for the Eagles this year. Todd Gurley I'm playing on a Thursday night I don't necessarily like. Um, just say this. I'm really not a fan of Moan's team the way it's looking right now. I, I, I'm going through all the names I see outside of Amari Cooper. You know, he doesn't really have any big play guys. I'm just going to actually go ahead here 
with Kyle in this game. Uh, I think Kyle's going to take away the win. He's going to go one and two. I think Moan's going to go one and two. And I, I know one person in that match who's not going to be happy to hear that this week. Final matchup of the week. Uh, one is $25 richer. The other one is been surprisingly being the, playing the best fantasy football defense, which basically means he's the luckiest guy. So far in the league right now, we've got studs inflated balls versus the team rectum blasters. Stud versus Zuck. Some very powerful quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. You know, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to say that they're the same for this matchup. I think the big difference here is that Ajayi's a little beat at, banged up. I think he's still going to play. Jordan Reed is my biggest concern here at tight end. When you have foot issues in the NFL, it never turns out very well. Um, C.J. Anderson playing way better than I thought this year. He was one guy I was going to stay away from in the draft. It looks like it's working out. Fitzgerald was nowhere to see last week. I played him in DraftKings. Kind of screwed me. But DeAndre Hopkins getting a ton of looks. Um, he's playing Tyrell Williams, who I don't think has been very impressive. Neither has T.Y. Hilton, though, I think, until Andrew Luck comes back. That's not really going to help Zuck a whole lot here. It's on injury report, I'm seeing, you know, Kelvin Benjamin had a surprise uh, popped up on the injury report. I'm going to have to go with Stud here. I think Zuck's uh, fantasy luck finally ends here. I don't think he scores a lot of points again this week. And I'm taking Stud. Stud's going to move to 2-1. and one. I'm late. I got to get out of here, guys. I can't believe I did this. But I'm sorry for a shitty show. I'll get better next week, hopefully. I probably won't. It's good. Whatever. It's going to be the same. Kendrick,